Farmers and ranchers in South Dakota carry an incredibly heavy load when it comes to producing food and goods for the world. And if we expect them to keep this going, there's no reason that DU shouldn't be able to step in and assist them with education and financial assistance to help them get their operation to where it not only benefits them, but it also does good for the world. So soil health is really uh, the metric we use to, to, to measure the success of, of the practices we're using. And those practices include you know, reducing annual tillage, uh, increasing crop diversity, getting more grasses on the landscape, and keeping our livestock and cattle industry in, intact in South Dakota. All of these principles work together uh, to, to improve soil health uh, and also to improve habitat on the landscape at the same time. Uh, we can also benefit the producer by increasing uh, those profit margins. Historically, the Prairie Pajo region was all grasslands and wetlands. And as man moved out into the landscape, we see this influx of agriculture intensification. And as that continued through the years, we've seen a lot of the grassland habitat be converted into cropland, which is totally acceptable because when you look at the soils, it's extremely fertile. And that's what brings a lot of attraction to this region for cropland production and also raising beef. So when we think of it in that aspect, you know, we care about what the producers are doing on the ground. So here in the Great Plains, uh, we have the most biologically diverse soils on the whole planet. In a healthy soil, one handful of soil has more functioning organisms than they are people on the entire earth. If we lose our topsoil and we lose our fertility and we lose that functioning system of our soil, then we're actually um, losing our food systems. More than half of the topsoil has disappeared over the last 50 years. And that's not something you really uh, visualize as you're driving across the landscape. But once you dig down and take a look at the soil, uh, you realize what's been lost. There's millions of dollars that are lost every year through wind erosion, through nutrients and carbon and the uh, um, biological life in that top layer of soil that is that gets blown around, that dies, um, and that's lost. And once that's lost, it's, it's hard to regain it. We don't have topsoil. We can't grow food of all any kind. Start realizing that we gotta do something. We gotta keep things going because um, starvation and hunger hurts. The fastest way to bring a nation to its knees is to have an empty belly. Anytime you do any kind of tillage, whether it's chiseled plowing or cultivating or whatever, you're losing up to 70% of your beneficial insects and biota. They have a functioning level in that soil system where they belong. And once you disrupt that, then you, have, then you lose them. And so after years and years and years of continuous tillage, we eventually get what we call dead soil because you've, you have literally killed all your beneficials in your soil by over tilling. So a lot of the plants that we have in the landscape are meant to keep carbon in the soil. But whenever we have tillage events, whether it's in grassland or cropland, massive amounts of carbon are released back into the atmosphere. We need to be thinking about practices that build soil uh, not that lose soil. And, and really soil health and regenerative agriculture is that winning ticket. Uh, and really there are a growing number of producers that are doing this. So really when, when we started the soil health program uh, in the prairies, uh, we, we found cover crops to be uh, uh, the best way to start the conversation with producers. So once you come out of a crop system, if we can get another um, cover crop, uh, whether a single species or multi-species cover crop going in there, then we can protect that soil. Um, also, another uh, thing that we like to do is uh, maintain uh, crop residue. We can actually armor plate that soil and keep it from eroding through wind or water erosion. There's multiple ways to increase crop diversity. One of the easiest ways is to incorporate a small grain, uh, which you're able to follow up with a full season cover crop. Um, if that doesn't work in your system, then you can actually add multi-species cover uh, in, in behind corn or in behind your soybeans, uh, so you're getting a diversity. That's vitally important because you're getting multi, multiple root densities 
and depths on these multi-species cover crops. So when we look at native systems compared to these cropland systems, a lot of those roots do not go past one or two feet into the soil, which poses a lot of issues whenever we hit these drought years. In these native grasses, we often see the roots that go upwards of 10 feet down into the soil to be able to hit that groundwater level and survive through these tougher conditions. So we've, we've recognized for years that, uh, that livestock are critically important uh, in the Great Plains. Uh, really, uh, cattle need, need grass and they need water. And that's why DU is helping farmers and, and ranchers uh, with their infrastructure costs uh, to put in cross fences and water development that are designed uh, to move their livestock across the landscape in a similar manner. We want to get in and graze an area really hard and then get off and then let those grasslands and wetlands rest for a long period of time. This is the natural ecosystem. If we do that, uh, those areas are going to build soil health they're gonna increase their plant diversity, they're gonna raise more beef, and they're gonna raise more wildlife at the same time. By incorporating livestock or getting livestock back on your landscape, um, it's, it actually aids in the producer's bottom line. It can, uh, it can help uh, add money to the producer twofold. Um, obviously you have the ability to buy or to sell your livestock, but also the nutrients that you're getting from the livestock through uh, um, urine and feces. By doing that, not only are you putting money in your bank account, but also you're putting money into your soil account. You know, more and more goats and sheep are showing up in the communities. Um, so it doesn't have to be cattle. If we incorporate cover crops on the cropping systems and then have livestock, you can get two sources of income on the same acres in one year. Uh, that's a great way to improve soil health uh, and improve uh, your, your uh, bottom line uh, and to uh, keep some habitat on the landscape at the same time. Yeah, so, so wetlands can be, uh, they can be problematic uh, in a farming system. We like to have a, a, a flat field that, that, that you control the water and there's never any fluctuations. We know what's gonna happen, but you put some topography on that landscape, it can be difficult. How we manage the uplands around those wetlands can impact the hydrology of those basins at the same time. If, if we're improving soil health, we can improve the soil structure around these basins and actually buffer the impacts of, of, of water uh, in, in these cropland areas. If croplands are able to infiltrate the water uh, and store it you know, for later use, it's gonna minimize the disturbance in those low-lying areas. So it's gonna benefit the producer uh, managing those, those wetland areas in a farming system. At the same time, if the farmer is able to integrate livestock into his, his operation, he can use wetland systems and grassland buffers uh, with this grazing system. And this is a great way to take acres that are perhaps less productive uh, for, from a yield standpoint in a traditional farming system, and instead, let's raise some beef on those acres uh, without putting in the inputs. Uh, so if you start balancing out uh, the cost benefit of those, you can really learn how to uh, increase your profit on those less productive acres. Another benefit that we've seen with a lot of the producers that we worked with as, as they're integrating habitat uh, into their operation, they see more wildlife on the landscape and they have the ability to bring in hunters in the fall and they can actually supplement their income uh, with the hunting service and guide service on their operation. Again, uh, leveraging multiple revenue streams into their operation uh, through soil health practices and benefiting wildlife at the same time. So as the soil health movement is taking its reins in South Dakota, we're fortunate to work with a couple producers and one is Cody. When Cody approached us, he was interested in adopting some of these soil health principles and we had a lot of conversations about how this was going to fit into his operation specifically. But ultimately, Cody's concern is to keep this farm alive for his family and be able to pass it on to the next generation. And by adopting soil health principles, we're extremely confident that that's going to be attainable. So yeah, with, with the soil being you know, our most important asset, um, I just thought that it would, it would serve me well to start learning more about how it, how it functioned um, and how you know, maybe we could build resiliency you know, into that and, and hopefully it would pay off down the road. And being able to infiltrate more water you know, into our soils is the most important thing that we can do as farmers and ranchers because without moisture, you're not growing anything, you're not, you're not feeding anything, but then also 
covering that soil so it's not baking in the sun all day. So if I have bare soil out there that's getting baked all day long, it's 90 degrees today, and the soil temperature's at 125 degrees, it's ki killing microbial life. It's, you know, it's just burning down the aggregates and it's making that ground is just a hard rock. A healthy water cycle is infiltrating water and then the water coming back up, you know, and, and filling these water reservoirs from below. You know, the water's meant to go through the soil, get filtered, and come back up, you know, as clean and as healthy as possible. The more you start understanding about regenerative agriculture and the more you, you see the people that are implementing it, um, it's really impressive what people can make a living off of. To most of us, changes can be scary. However, Reed, who was a fifth generation farmer and the four generations before him had all farmed conventionally, took it upon himself to change to make sure that uh, his soil health was protected, his, he was making money off the land, he could support his family, and his children would have a nice functioning system and a viable farm to come into once they want to start farming. So Reed came to uh, Ducks Unlimited last year to take part in our uh, soil testing program. Um, I primarily am a cow-calf producer um, and I grow, I grow some crop ground, but uh, primarily I have grasslands here. Um, on my crop ground I grow corn and soybeans and wheat or rye, some small grain, but primarily corn and beans. And in my corn, I'm trying to experiment with 60 inch corn rows so I can get a cover crop established between the rows. And I try to plant a diverse cover crop cocktail mix with several different species in it for the soil biology. And also for my livestock in the fall, it's just really good feed for them. It helps with weed control as well. I mean, I'm trying to create natural fertility in the soil so I don't have to rely on as many inputs. Just looking at my soils now, the ground does not get hard because it's it's got good soil structure and good till. I kind of got started down this path just because I'm a smaller operator and I was looking at ways I could do things a little differently to be more profitable per acre instead of gaining more acres. The more I learned about soil health, the more I became passionate about it. It was just the right thing to do. I felt more than anything and I, I still believe the profitability is there as well. If you can get your system to function on its own and work with nature instead of against, you're ultimately going to be more profitable in the long run. Working with Ducks Unlimited has really benefited me because they have very knowledgeable agronomists that can go over my soil health with me. Plus just the, some of the the opportunities, the funding opportunities with uh, cover crops and restoring some grasslands, it's, it's really benefited my operation. We recognized right away that, that the Dale Demonstration Farm here, just south of Huron, had a, had a really unique opportunity uh, to demonstrate the benefits of soil health. I think it's more of an education. You have to get information to people somehow. If it's articles, if it's newspaper, or if it's just demonstration. Uh, I think it's huge because we talk about profitability on the producer side. I see the Dale Demonstration Farm as a huge opportunity for the Conservation District, for the state conservation people, not just in Beetle County, but around the state, as an educational process of, yes, you can take 80 acres and do this on it and be the people that are willing to spend that money to see if it works. It's education. It's, if we're gonna fail, I would rather have the failure happen on that 300 acres of the Dale, Dale farm than some farmer investing a lot of money and it completely fails. Seeing is believing. Uh, if you don't see it happen locally, you're gonna have a lot of questions and not understand how it works on your local site. Uh, so we want to take that risk. Let us take the risk up front. Uh, let's bring you out there, show you how things work, and then we're going to provide additional technical assistance. Our, our biologists and agronomists are going to come with you to your site and help you implement these practices uh, on your own farmer and ranch. Uh, we want to tailor uh, these practices to what works for your operation. With our soil health program, uh, we're able to do soil tests and uh, we're able to see how much carbon, how much nitrogen, how much phosphorus, how much bacteria is in your soil 
so we can actually start the conversation with the, with the landowner, provide technical assistance, and then in some cases, or most cases, provide financial assistance to these guys to start the journey into soil health. And so we don't want you to undergo a, a, a large financial burden uh, we want to be able to facilitate that. And so that's where also the soil health program uh, comes in with Ducks Unlimited. We're able to help um, cost share and help fund some of these practices as you're entering into this soil health journey, into this regenerative ag journey. I guess, you know, we would not be able to put 100% of the bill of what we are investing into our place today. Um, without the cost share that we are getting with Ducks Unlimited. We're all in this journey together and we're just, we're just trying to help the next person, you know, be able to get onto this path and, and you know, bring the happiness and, and, you know, the profitability and the fun back to, you know, farming and ranching. Um, down the road with, with uh, information that we can put out, um, documentation, because people always want to see it, not just hear it. Uh, I think we can prove by going into a no-till situation to gain with soil health, go into a rotation of more than corner beans, get a small grain in there, get some cover crop in, and use the cattle. And then prove from year to year on what we're doing, what we can improve without using chemicals to get the bushels we want out of our crop or the use of the land that we need it for. There is so much information out there and there's so many willing people that are that, that are wanting to help you in that journey. So I wouldn't I would never have guessed it would be as easy as what it has been just because of the connections. Um, it's not easy to implement you know all of this but it's it's easy because there's so many willing people to help and so i would say you know don't be afraid you know to start give somebody a call you know ask them you know for help so we're trying to be that entity we're trying to be a service of our community we've always been able to help the producers that's the bottom line we're helping the producers in beetle county and the wildlife and livestock and we're helping we're hoping to help so in a properly functioning soil health system, you create resiliency um, on the landscape. It creates more profit, it creates less inputs, and it helps your farm uh, maintain its viability longer down the road. So if you have healthy soils, uh, you have healthy crops, you have healthy livestock, and, and overall, then you have a healthier population of people. We've found that uh, producers that are using these soil health practices are impacting their landscape uh, in a positive way. Uh, if we can help them continue to do that and help other producers in those local areas do that as well, uh, we can scale up uh, the impact of soil health and regenerative agriculture and impact this entire landscape.